Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessings to you. As you're joining in, you can share this broadcast and say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. All my partners, thank you so much for sowing into this ministry. Love you. I pray a special blessing over you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I touch and I agree with all my partners that they would experience the fullness of the blessing. I command blessings in your life. As some of you are watching me that need healing in your body, I pray for your body in the name of Jesus that be made whole. I pray for your body to be made whole, that you may serve God with full energy, full health. I speak health over you in the name of the Lord. We're dealing with something amazing on here. Amazing. Let's go to Psalm 37, verse 11. It says, but the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The abundance of peace. The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Saints, this, this, this is abundance. This is abundance, this peace, this is an inheritance, and it's all coming from you being meek, which means that you're teachable. Meekness means that you're teachable. Let's go to Psalm 25, verse 9. It says, the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. The meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. Now, saints, you notice that it talks about the meek inheriting the earth and delighting themselves in the abundance of peace. So life is good. Life is easy, is blessed, is abundant. But look at what he says now. After that, in Psalm 25, we're finding out what meekness is all about. It says that meek... The meek will he guide in judgment. So when he's saying guide in judgment, he means guide in decision making. A judgment is a decision. It's a verdict. It's what you have chosen. It's saying that a meek person, he's going to guide them in the right choices. And then it says, the meek will he teach his way. So he's going to show you his way of doing things. So saints, I want to say this to you. Meekness allows God to teach you how to sow and how to reap. How to work the kingdom system. Meekness causes you to honor God with your substance. Meekness causes you to know how to trust the Lord with everything that he places in your hands. Meekness is actually an anointing to soul. But you notice what are the results of this, that you're going to inherit the earth and delight yourself in the abundance of peace. Now, let's, let's look at what Psalm 25, verse 12 says. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. So verse 13, his soul shall dwell at ease. This is a sowing soul. A sowing soul. A soul that loves to sow. His soul shall dwell at ease. And his seed shall inherit the earth. Now, saints, we know that the seed is dealing with children. But seed is seed. It said his seed shall inherit the earth. Your seed has an inheritance in it as well. Along with your children, 
reaping the benefits of you making blessed decisions, you sowing, you yielding to the Father, you praising God, you walking in the Spirit. Also, your seed has the DNA of inheritance in it. Let's go to Psalm 24. Verse four, it says, he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. Look at verse five. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Okay, re let's remember that text there. Let's go to second Corinthians nine. Okay, it said that you're gonna receive righteousness, right? So, with the Bible saying that you're going to receive righteousness, the Bible says that you're going to receive righteousness. Okay, so what activity causes me to receive righteousness? Let's look this out. What activity in the word causes me to receive righteousness? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says this. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Okay, let's go back here. Let's go back to Psalm 24. Psalm 24 says, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. He's going to receive righteousness. Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. He shall multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. I, I want to show you something how sowing, it adds on and increases the fruits of righteousness unto God. Seed sowing is a righteousness multiplier. Seed sowing is how the father takes you into the greater measures of his ways. It's his ways manifested to you in seed sowing. The more you sow seed, the more you love God's way. The more you sow seed, the more you desire God's way. The more you sow seed, the more God breaks up whatever is not of his way that's still operating in you. Seed sowing breaks up wrong relationships. Seed sowing delivers you from wrong family members. Seed sowing takes away the coward in you. It makes you bold. When you sow in seed, the mindset of God becomes more dominant inside of you. Why? Because you're doing an activity where you're using a seed and God is also planting the seed of the word of God inside of you at the same time while you sow in. So you sow in the money seed, but the word seed is coming inside of you and taking root. This is the same thing that was going to happen to Adam. God was giving him the herb bearing seed, having him sow money. While God was planting divine seed, eternal seed inside of his mind, making him even more brilliant. It was an exchange. Sowing is an exchange. What you give, God is giving you more and better what you gave. Whatever you give, God gives more and better than what you gave. Sowing is the secret to life on earth. If you want your life to be rich, blessed, healthy, wealthy, it's all in the seed. Sowing seed is a higher level of life as a Christian. If you want to live on the high plane, it's in seed sowing. If you want God to take you into the depths of what it means to be blessed is in seed sowing. 
Being blessed actually empowers you to sow. You don't have to sow to be blessed. You sow because you are blessed. You don't have to sow to be anointed. You're, so, you're sowing because you are anointed. Sowing is a revelation of the oil that's inside of you. The seed must be something that you think about if you love God. How could you say that you love God and you never think about giving him a gift? How could you say you love God and never thought about sowing a thousand dollars? How could you say you love God and never thought about sowing five hundred dollars? You never thought about sowing big into the Lord? Honor. Chastens you to sow. It trains you to sow. Honor makes your brain think differently than a thief. A thief steals from God, but Satan steals from the thief. I have a question for you. Have you destroyed the devourer in your life? Have you defeated the spirit of the devourer and the spirit of the strong man? Have you defeated the devourer in your life? Remember, after you've been made born again, is the devourer still on his throne? Have you pulled down the stronghold of finances? Because the blood was shed and pulled down every stronghold. Have you become a joint heir with Christ Jesus? To work the same works that he worked. The blood of King Jesus already paid for riches and wealth to flow in your life without any limitation, without any lack, without any hindrances. When will you cooperate with the wealth power of the Holy Ghost? When will you cooperate it? I had to learn how to cooperate with it. I had to learn how to cooperate with the wealth power of God. The wealth power of God it can only be effective in the life of someone that's hungry and thirsty for righteousness. The wealth power of God. The wealth power of God can only do its work in the life of somebody that is hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Until you become hungry and thirsty for righteousness, the wealth and wealth power of God can't be effective. But saints, we got a lot of prayer warriors, right? But where are the sowing and reaping warriors? Where are the people that the Father going to be able to use you to dominate and nothing going to be able to stop you because you got finances and you filled with the Holy Ghost. You got finances and you full of the spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't just fill you for you to talk in tongues all the time. The Holy Spirit fill you for you to sow and for you to reap. What is the state of your bosom? Is your bosom even active as a child of God? Your bosom. Because King Jesus said, men shall give into your bosom. But can men give into your bosom? Are you a giver? Are you a cheerful giver?
A lot of times people think that they're growing because they're not sowing. But the truth of the matter is, a man of God teaching you the word, you really can't grow until you sow. Because knowledge is an empowerment to activate an activity. Did you catch that? Knowledge is an empowerment to activate an activity. So the purpose of knowledge is God giving you knowledge so that you can be anointed to do something. A child of God grows through a sowing account. Your growth is connected to your seed. You can't grow without sowing. Robbing God is not growth. <laughs> Robbing God is not growth. The evil man will call it growth. The liar will call it growth. But no man can grow while he dishonoring God. When the Lord wants to test you in the area of your speed, he'll give you a seed. When the Lord want to test you in the area of your spiritual speed, your mental speed, he going to give you a seed. Your seed is an opportunity for you to prove your maturity to the Lord that you can handle the blessing, that you can handle much, that you can handle increase. The seed is how you show the Lord, I am ready for you to give me plenty. For you to give me riches. For you to give me wealth. Now saints, wealth and riches is a part of the new blood covenant. And wealth and riches will overtake any man that chooses to sow. And operate in this kingdom law. God is not a respecter of persons. If you choose to sow, you're going to reap. The same God that give you the seed is the same God that give you the harvest. Sowing allows the Lord to do favorable acts towards you. It's through sowing. Sowing creates a platform for the spirit to work miracles in your life. Signs and wonders, provisional favor, financial favor is all in the seed. Your soul has to be trained to sow because your soul will lean in the direction of being a thief and robbing God because that's, that's, that's more accessible. For you to sow, you have to die to yourself. How could you not sow seed and you a seed yourself? The seed that God will call from you is lesser than you. If you sow yourself to Jesus, every other thing should be small. This is not bigger than my soul. It's not bigger than my soul. So if I give the Lord my soul, this smaller than my soul, right? It's a lesser currency. We know that the soul is considered currency because King Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his own soul? So King Jesus dealt with the soul like it was a business transaction. He said, what does it profit? That's a business term. And then he said, gain. That's a business term. Then he said, lose. That's a business term. He dealt with the soul like it was currency. So when you give King Jesus your soul, how you can't give King Jesus your money? Your money is lesser than your soul. 
But if you can't give him your money, the truth is you haven't given him your soul. <laughs> because this, this temporal, your soul is eternal. If you say, King Jesus, I give you my soul, and then you hide this, you lying. So saints, the man asked King Jesus, what could I do to inherit eternal life? King Jesus said, go and sow. Remember the rich man? The rich man that was made rich, not by sowing. He was made rich by stealing. That's not divine riches. That's riches that come from serving Satan. Lying, stealing, that's Satan. King Jesus gave him an instruction. He walks away grievously. So you know that he wasn't living a life yielded to Jesus. So his riches did not come divinely. His riches came demonically. This man doesn't know how to sow. There's a riches that come from greed and there's a riches that come from seed. I'm going to say this again. There's a riches that come from greed and then there's a riches that come from seed. When people get rich by seed, they have been promoted by God to handle riches. So you really can't get, you can't get mad at them. Like, see, I'm, I'm here to be a blessing to you because, see, I walk this path of sowing and reaping for God to make me rich soul, for God to make me a vessel that you can honor. I walk this path. I'm still, as a matter of fact, I'm still doing it today. I still sow. I take out of my ministry funds and sow. Every day I'm sowing. I still do the same thing. So I'm not a hypocrite of this knowledge, but I'm speaking to you about a realm that you got access to and you shouldn't live a low level life when you was created to sow and reap and live at the top all the time, not sometimes. A non-sower has an atmosphere for a hard heart and a hard head. And the more that a person don't sow into God, they operate in secretive witchcraft and secretive rebellion, stubbornness. Seed sowing breaks the mentality of demons that secretly operate through those that call on the Lord. Seed sowing breaks mentalities that secretly operate in a person that has asked Jesus into their heart. Sowing seed demolishes covenants that demons have with your soul unknowingly. The activity of sowing is power over serpents. It's power over flaws. It's power over weakness. Because when you sow, it might look like you just placing money, but you're making an exchange. You're showing the Lord how you think about him with the seed. Every time you sow a seed, you're in communication of how you feel about the father. Your life will never have everything that God said it was supposed to have until you start sowing money. Money was created to worship God. And if you don't use money to worship God, you worship in money.
If you don't use this money to communicate with King Jesus, this money will communicate to you above King Jesus. If you don't use money to talk to God, money going to talk to you as your God. God has too many financial rivers for you not to worship him with money. He created money as an object for you to tap into worship with. Money is an object that you tap into true honor, true worship with. And when you worship God with seed, he worship you with harvest. So even the father is not one-sided. Because you reap what you sow. If you sow worship, you reap worship. Have you ever thought that provision is God worshiping you? You ever thought about that? You going to tell me that he not worshiping you? Of course he worshiping you. He providing for you. That's worship. Think about that. God worship you all the time. So it, it'll be a great disservice if you get money and you just pocket it and you, oh, no, I'm not going to, you know. God worship you with oxygen. Tell me how you can be inside of an earth and you don't know where wind is blowing, but you're able to breathe every moment. How? How is that happening? How are you inside of an earth where you can't locate where the oxygen is blowing? But yet the Lord just breathing upon you constantly. You got oxygen. Where the wind coming from? So saints, it's a lot of things that God do to worship you. How you got organs in your body? How come you can go pee right now? How come you can go swallow food? You got so much stuff that God is worshiping you about. And imagine you live your whole life sometimes never learning how to worship God. They tell you that worshiping God is singing a song. I'm going to sing a song. That's how I'm going to worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. you just singing. Worship is more than singing is bringing. Worship is more than singing is bringing. Every time you bring something to God, you're, you're, you're sowing, you're worshiping. The Bible talked about the true worshiper. You know why? Because the true worshiper has, has found the true way in which God wants to be worshiped. Saints, imagine somebody tells you to sing, but you start dancing. Or somebody tells you to dance, but you start singing. Are they going to get pleased? Because that's not the way that they want to be worshipped. Excuse my example, but I, 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 want, I want to talk how I want to talk. Say somebody go to the strip club and the stripper pull out a Bible and say, let's go to John and let's study together. Now, mind you, I've never been to a strip club. I've never been to a strip club. Correction, club. I never went to a building. <laughs> but imagine if somebody go to a place where there's strippers and the stripper tell you, come on, let's go read John. That's not the way that you want the stripper to worship you. You want her to dance, right? Imagine if you go to a basketball game and the basketball player say, hey, we're not going to shoot the ball today. We just want to have a conversation with you all. No, you went to the basketball game because you want to see basketball game being played. That's how you want the basketball players to worship you by playing ball, by shooting, by running, by defending. You want them to win. Saints. How is it that man 
won't give God the worship that he wants. You was created to sow. Sowing has all of your debt cancellation in it. The first man that God created, the first major assignment he gave him was to sow. The first thing he put in his hand was not a woman. It wasn't a baby. It wasn't a house. It wasn't a child. It was a seed. A lot of times you going in reverse because you get in a house. You get in a child, you get in a wife, you get in a husband and no seed. You was created to sow, to unlock your whole destiny on earth. The father loves sowing. Why do we sow money? Because that's what the father loves. That's what he wants. He wants you to express your honor with money. Do you know you really, you, you can't honor God without no money? The Bible say honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord with your money. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Honor the Lord with your provision in Proverbs chapter three, verse nine. But then he told you what he was gonna do. He said that I'll give you abundance. I'll make everything run over in your life. See, when you sow in, everything becomes pleasurable to you. You live a pleasurable life. I live a pleasurable life. I live a blessed life. I don't have no torment. I don't, I don't have no trouble with no demons. I'll box a demon in the back of his back of his head. <laughs> the other day I was watching something where people was running from demons. I said, I wish a demon would come in my house. Demons don't even want to mess with me if I close my eyes. The demon look over and says, Is he really sleeping? I done cast out demons in my ministry. I done did all type of stuff. I done, I done cast. So, so when we deal with apostolic power like this, 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 this is, this is, it, it belongs to you. But saints, I don't, I don't scare no demons. Demons scared of me. When, when you become a sower, there's a God mindset that you dominate with. Not only will you have a God mindset, but you'll have a God reality and a God consciousness and a God condition all around you. Your life will look like God's. Saints, God is not broke and the father don't have no financial issues and the father does not have any sickness, diseases. The father is a dominator. The powerful thing about seed sowing is that when you're sowing, every single thing that the father has, he start transferring it to you because your seed is a channel. Your seed is an umbilical cord. Your seed is a bosom. You starting to hold the fullness of God through sowing. Your soul has to learn how to sow because your soul is originally a thief. Your soul will, will steal from God. And then I'll make excuses. Oh, God don't want what I got. He's God. He don't need this stuff down here. But, but listen, we're not dealing with what he need. We dealing with what he said he loved. And truth be told, God does need a seed sower. The Bible said that King Jesus told that woman at the well that the father seeketh a true worshiper. He's See, sowing is a position that's always open in the kingdom because a lot of people not going to walk down this straight and narrow path. People walk away and say, this is too much. This is too much. I don't want to do it. Sowing is an eternal life activity. Sowing is an eternal life activity. Everybody in heaven is a sower. You say, well, prophet, why are they still sowing? Because sowing ain't got nothing to do with you being in heaven or earth. It has everything to do with God saying, this is what I like. Everybody in heaven is doing what God likes. The 24 elders sow into King Jesus all the time. The Bible said that they take their crown. They lay it down at his feet. 
They worship before the throne all the time. They always sowing. They are master sowers. The 24 elders are master sowers in the heavenlies. The 24 elders are always around the throne of God sowing seed all the time. Everything God blesses them with, they put it right there at the altar, at, this, at, at, at the throne. Seed sowing translates you to live out of the throne room of the Father in heaven. In his throne room is all power and all glory and all wealth and all riches and all strength and all health and all deliverance and all justice and all protection and all prosperity and all peace. Sowing is a prophetic anointing. Sowing is how you demonstrate the kingdom. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Look what it says in verse 6. It says, but I say unto you that he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully, he shall reap bountifully. Look what it says right here in verse six. It's telling you that if you a small sower, if you sow small money, you're going to reap small money. But then look what it says right here. It says that he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. It's telling you. If God put this in your hands, look, say you got this right. You got this in your hands. And you say, okay, I got all this right here. And you say, uh, man, I got a lot. Uh, let me see. Y'all got change for uh, 50? Uh, let me see this here. Uh, boom. And all you do is place 50 down. Imagine this right here. You place 50. Now you done left all this right here and then do nothing. Think about that. And you found you got to change. You said, oh, I need a change, man. Boom. That's sowing sparingly. Sowing sparingly means that you find the least that you can give to God. The least amount of money, the least amount of seed that's sparingly sown. Now, here's what happens. But when, when you, the Bible say bountifully sown. So you got this right here. You might weigh it out. All right. Bam. You see, you done threw out more. You got this right here in your hand. Now you moving towards bountiful sowing. But see, when you get to bountiful sowing, for real, for real, watch. You might get this. You might say, Lord, watch this. Now, you know what somebody, you, you know what somebody do? They start saying, nah. Why would you do that? Well, the question to you is this. Why isn't there are people with a revelation that even if I do this, God got this waiting for me? You acting like this just came out. Oh, oh well, I'm going to do. But this is greater than that. Malachi had a revelation. He said, God said, try me now in this and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Malachi understood that God was looking for somebody to sow. He was looking for somebody that would stop robbing God. And then the Lord threw out a challenge. He said, if you, if you, if you choose not to rob me and you choose to become a sower, here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to release you into abundance and wealth and a good life. I'm going to show you that it works. Think about that. The Lord attached a challenge with the seed. He said, if you could master this, I'm going to supernaturally work my power to make your life have plenty. Make you rich. Saints, do you understand what riches is all about in wealth? It's just God providing for you at the level of your decision to sow. I got to say that one more time. Wealth and riches is God providing for you at the level that you have Chosen to sow. Think about that. Why don't everybody have wealth and riches? Because they, they don't. They have not created a lifestyle. Of responding to God with the seed. Remember, look what it says right here. I will multiply your seed sown. What's. Okay, so if God is multiplying the seed sown, this really is God creating the riches. While the seed is being multiplied, I'm becoming richer and wealthy. Think about that. The seed that's sown, imagine some people don't sow seed. Do you know that if you don't sow seed, you can't multiply? Now, you can fake multiplication. You can steal like everybody else. But until you honor God with money, you cannot multiply via the Holy Ghost. You may multiply via witchcraft because the whole world does that. But at, at the end of the day, after the world multiply, they still go into hell. What's going to happen? But you wasn't created to go to hell. You was created to have the true riches. Let's go here. Let me show you something. Multiplication is a mantle that God gave to Adam that while he was sowing, he would taste of this mantle constantly. The mantle of multiplication. And the Holy Spirit got a dimension of multiplication where he keep on multiplying you. Imagine Adam was surrounded by Havilah in, in Genesis 2. And the Bible said that the gold was fine there. It was good. You know what gold is? Money. God put money in the garden before sin, before any wickedness. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. There's money right there, large money, gold. Remember, heaven is made out of streets of gold. So even the streets is made out of finances. It's made out of gold. It's made out of currency. That's how easy money is for God. So when God want to test your heart, he just put money in your hands. See what you're going to do with it. And that money will prove to you how you see God. Imagine you saying, I trust the Lord and I get paid and I don't give God nothing. I give the man money that, that say he for my car payment and he don't know the Lord, but I give to him. Imagine I give money to life insurance and the life insurance company. They don't even trust Jesus. They don't love Jesus, but I give to them. Imagine my light bill company. I give to everybody. And I don't even think about giving the one that created the opportunity for me, that spoke to people's hearts to favor me that has given me life in my body to go and even work. And think about it. I never even think about giving him no money. Imagine what that communicates to the father. See, your decisions talk to God. You can pray, but your decision's gonna tell him a message too. So watch this here. If God give me this and I rob it, I'm telling the Lord, I don't honor you. I honor everything else in my life. I honor my bills. I honor 
my pleasures. I honor what I want to accomplish. But when it comes down to you, I don't honor you. And saints, that's what you say to the Lord. Your soul has to learn sowing. It's a part of being born again. It's a part of being a royal priesthood. It's a part of being redeemed. Saints, have you ever wondered what began to happen when the children of Israel came out with their silver and gold and now they're in a tough situation. Where did all that stuff go? Well, saints, they built a golden calf. They took their finances, their, their money. They did all type of stuff, but they wouldn't sow into Moses the way that they were supposed to be sowing into Moses. Remember, God brought them out for them to sow. They got out and didn't sow. And look at how their mind was playing tricks on them. Look at how their mentality was betraying them, betraying their anointing. Look at how they was having mental strongholds. And God opened up the ground. God opened up the ground, right? And swallowed them in the ground. You know why? Because their ground, they wasn't working it. Their ground didn't have no, uh, it wasn't solidified. It wasn't solid. If they was working their ground, they would have never fell in the ground. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at what it says right here. It says, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. That means that you give God your lease. You make sure that you sow in a zone where you can feel like you, you're safe. You sow in a way that you don't want to sh stretch yourself. You don't want to come out your comfort zone. Now, Imagine a person that steps over into sowing bountifully. The Bible said they shall reap bountifully. This kind of shut down all that small talk. Because see, why are you resorting to praying for much when the Bible is telling you how much cometh, how money cometh, how finances cometh, how favor cometh, how provision cometh? All these different things are in sowing bountifully. So imagine, imagine if you go to God, right? And you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I pray that you will multiply my favor, multiply my health, multiply my strength. The law of multiplication is in the seed. <laughs> so, so, so a lot of people are praying for what God already got a law set up. So that that could be ministered to you. Abundance, health, strength, favor. You want to open door where the open doors is in the seed. Sowing is the key to opening all doors. Your seed could enter you into any door that you desire to go. Now, religious folk, all they can do is just pray in tongues. That's, that's, how, they, that's how they work out. They're, they're knowing of God. They're just praying tongues. They just read the Bible. They just quote scriptures. That's how religious people do. But they never become owners of houses. They never become owners of cars. They never have money to feed 300 people. They never take 500 people out on a date and say, let me feed you and show you what my God can do. They never do that. See, King Jesus didn't just heal the leper. He multiplied food for thousands. He was a food feeder. So, so don't let the devil pitch you in a box about portraying Jesus. Or oh, I portray Jesus because I'm a cast out devil. I'm going to portray Jesus because I'm going to heal the sick. But listen, can you portray Jesus in his fullness? And why rob yourself 
of that divine right? Why rob yourself of that divine ability? The same King Jesus that was cast out devils was the same King Jesus pitting supernatural money in a fish. Pit the supernatural money inside of an animal. This the same King Jesus. The same King Jesus that taught them for three days was the same King Jesus that said, I don't want them to go home hungry unless they faint because they've been fasting. I want to put some food in their belly. I want to show them my provisional power. So, so remember, when you full of the Holy Ghost, remember that there's the fullness of the Lord. King Jesus is a wealth demonstrator. He told his disciples, don't bring your purse, don't bring your food, don't bring no meals. Huh? Think about that. See your vet? I see you, Yvette. You've been, you, 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 you've been knowing me for years, huh? Didn't I feed you? <laughs> we had meetings in Georgia. That was 2016, I think, 2016 or something. So I'm not a hypocrite of this. This, this. this, the fullness of the gospel coming forth here. The fullness of the gospel. Because what you're going to do after you done got saved, and you done got sanctified. Are you going to accomplish and establish the kingdom of God on earth? Remember, Deuteronomy 8.18 says, I'll give you the power to get wealth that I may establish my covenant. See, God is giving you power to get wealth. Wealth is a part of the covenant of God being established and is a part of God demonstrating what he promised the fathers. He told Abraham, he swore to Abraham that he was going to make you rich, that he was going to give you wealth, that he was going to bless you. Think about that. He promised Abraham that he was going to make you wealthy. So imagine if you lived this whole life talking about, oh, I don't want to hear nothing about no wealth. And saints, you notice when we start talking about wealth, that's, that's when the religious demons start coming up, talking about, oh, we need to hear about some salvation. Wealth is deliverance. It's deliverance. Wealth is salvation. Sowing is salvation. Harvests is salvation. Having plenty is salvation. Prosperity is salvation. Salvation comes from King Jesus. It's him delivering you. Everything that's in abundant life is salvation. Just think about it. If, if you have abundant life, this is what comes from King Jesus. Everything that King Jesus gives is salvation. Abundance is salvation. The devil been lying for ages trying to make us think that salvation was just you stop smoking or you just stop thinking the wrong thought. No, salvation is you coming out with your silver and gold. Salvation is you being able to sow and not rob God. You delivered from being a thief. That's salvation too. But the devil tried to pit salvation in one bracket. So when you think that you delivered, he could still be holding on to certain aspects of your deliverance and you never know it. Because Satan don't want you to get that money situation right. Money cometh, cometh from God. Money cometh is a divine mantle that the spirit has given to you in the end times for you to honor your God, you to help your man of God, and for you to display the kingdom of God with power. Money cometh is a demonstration of kingdom power in its intense fashion. Now, I experienced money cometh because I started sowing. And then also, I respected and honored the man of God, Apostle Leroy Thompson. And that, that's, uh, now watch this here. My teaching is my teaching, right? But that phrase, money cometh, that didn't come out of my mouth first. Money cometh came out of Apostle Leroy Thompson's mouth first. But I'm a partaker of money cometh because I've decreed that 
I have uh, named my seeds that before and it works. And see, money cometh is more than just you having riches and wealth. Money cometh gives you discipline, diligence, determination, distinction. It gives you discernment. Because when you have money, everybody has needs. Everybody need money from you. And God ain't put that money in your hand for you to be taking care of, of Lucifer children. God put money in your hand as a ministry. You're supposed to minister to God back with that money. You're supposed to minister back unto the spirit of God with what he placed in your hands and distribute it accordingly. <laughs> money cometh is a test from God because he'll judge you. While God is putting money in your hand, he's also going to be giving you a supernatural test, examination. You're going to have to fulfill the examination correctly. When he put money coming in your, in, in your life and it's flowing, your work ethic is going to be tested. Some people, they get money and then they start sitting down talking about they arrived. They already made it. But then they start casualizing their assignment. Hezekiah in the Bible, money cometh was at work in his life and he became wicked. That's why Isaiah came to him and told him, you're about to die. And remember, he turned his face to the wall and started praying. When money cometh come into your life, keep on praying. Keep on seeking the Lord. Don't stop. Don't start uh, reclining. The goodness of God is supposed to keep you in repentance. You're supposed to keep on shifting yourself to the next level of faith, the next level of glory. Sowing bountifully will not be done by a religious sower. A religious sower, once they realize that they're supposed to sow, they'll choose to sow the least amount possible. Bountiful sowing occurs in the soul of those that have revelation of the harvest, the Lord of the harvest, and the pleasure that the seed brings to God. A bountiful sower has adapted to the preference of the father. They love seeing the Lord satisfied and they use the seed as a celebration method to worship the God that created them. Bountiful sowing brings bountiful money. Bountiful seeds bring bountiful money. Bountiful seeds bring bountiful harvests. Bountiful means plentiful, uh, uh, plenteous, uh, rich, wealthy. When you're sowing big, you're reaping big. So when you want the Lord to do big things in your life, you sow big. If you want God to do small things in your life, you sow small. The Lord has placed it in your authority to choose how he should react to you. Remember what the Bible says, you reap what you sow, Galatians. So if you're sowing money, that's what you're reaping. The seed is a way for you to unlock the great God Jehovah in his bigness, in his abundance, in his plenty, in his riches, in his wealth. It's an opportunity. If you choose to work the sowing system, you're going to be able to rest. You're going to be able to drink. You're going to be able to eat and be merry without worrying about Satan riding over your head. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 talked about a sowing that protects you from the evil that's operating on the earth. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, it talks about give a portion of seven, even to eight, because you don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. It's saying creatively sow. Use the seed, sow it into your man of God, sow it into your teacher. Use that seed because you don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. The seed is preservation. The seed is protection. Your seed guards you from the evil that moves in your nation. It guards you from the evil that moves in your city, in your state, in your neighborhood. It makes you invisible. 
The seed destroys Satan's permission to manipulate you, to deceive you, to destroy you, to damage you. The seed places a wall of fire around you. It shields you from satanic attacks. There's a sowing that guards you from the, 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 the destruction that lay waste at noonday, the arrow that flies by day. A thousand will have to fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. It can't come near you because you're a sower. When the Lord is ready to take your life to the next degree, he's going to call you to another sowing level, another sowing sacrifice, another sowing submission, because he's ready to take your life to the next degree. Harvests is the manifestation of an easy life. Harvests is the manifestation of the yoke that King Jesus spoke about in the Gospels. Remember, he said, my yoke is easy. A harvest is the manifestation of the yokes of King Jesus, the yoke of King Jesus to make everything easy, to make everything blissful, to make everything prosperous. Joshua 1, 8, 1, 9, it, it reveals that the seed could make your way prosperous. It reveals that you can use the seed to create your prosperity, your success. Because this prosperity is not on the Lord for him to make it happen. It's on you. He revealed that the seed could make your way prosperous. You meditating in the word of God. See, the word of God creates the pictures of prosperity, the pictures of being blessed, the pictures of multiplication, the pictures of of being a dominator, the pictures of being financially free, being free in your health. The, the word of God creates pictures. See, your mind needs pictures for your soul to start living in this kingdom system. You're going to start having to hear about what God going to give to you so that you can understand that when you give to God, you're not losing. People, when they give to God, they think that they're losing. That's why they don't give. When you give into God, you're not losing. You're unlocking what he has hidden. All of your provision is not made manifest right now. All the money that God created you to have, you don't have it manifested right now. All the health that you're supposed to have is not always manifested. But when you start sowing God manifests what was in the invisible realm. He starts showing it to you. There's certain seeds that when you sow it, it, it has a different harvest to it. I found that the thousand dollar seed, when I sow the thousand dollar seed, there's something that takes off in my soul concerning revelation. As a teacher of the word, I found that when I sow a thousand dollar seed, I enter a new place with the father. I just studied. I found out that when I sow a thousand dollar seed, mentally, my mind starts becoming electrified with divine thoughts, divine strategies. I was just doing something the other day and I needed, I needed some strategies. And I prayed in the Holy Ghost, but I sowed a thousand dollar seed. And the father told me, he said, son, I'm about to show you the door that I've opened concerning this. See, I do a lot of business deals. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes when I'm dealing with business and, and I'm dealing with somebody, sometimes I notice, I notice that there's a breach in the spirit. Like I, I don't feel no anointing. I don't feel... No, 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 no life coming from them. Like you, 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 and so, you know, I'm not going to pit the business deal and trust it. So then I go into deep prayer, deep meditation. I meditate. Some of y'all need to learn how to meditate. And until you learn how to meditate, some of the stuff that I'm talking to you about, you're going to think that it's strange. But, but some of you all move so fast, you don't meditate. 
Meditation is you giving God a chance to manifest clarity. Meditation is you giving the father opportunity to show you the best decision, the blessed decision. Meditation is the father able to show you what is dangerous that you're doing. Meditation, meditation. A lot of times you don't meditate. You don't get into a deep state of thought for the father to rebuke you. The father sometimes going to have to rebuke you about stuff that you put in your hands to because you're, you're, you're doing that at a certain level of wisdom. And, and the wisdom of God is higher than yours. His thoughts higher than yours. His ways higher than yours. Sometimes you get money. You think that that money for you, that money not for you. That money for your man of God. That money for the gospel. That money is for God's vision. If you don't understand that, you know what you're going to do? Ignore God. You know what you're going to do? Just follow your own plans. And guess what? Everybody got the free will to do that. But why do that after the blood done been shed and created a pathway for you to sow and reap and live this kingdom system with all power? Now, Acts chapter four, the apostles are moving, right? And the church is learning how to sow. Now, you can't learn how to sow without a teacher. So the apostles was teaching seed sowing. That's what a lot of people don't really understand. In Acts chapter four, verse 33 and on, the apostles had to teach them how to sow bountiful for them to sow bountiful. How are you going to do something that's not preached to you? You got to receive an anointing to do it. So why are these people taking their money, selling their houses and laying down the money at the apostles feet? They had got so full of the apostolic word. They understood that the money that I'm giving, I'm not losing it. I'm just unlocking the life that God want me to live. And whatever I give to him going to multiply. So Say somebody sold a house for $300,000. The $300,000 is not going to come back no $300,000. It's going to come back multiplied. So somebody else that don't got the revelation that's not being taught, they're going to hold on to th the $300,000. But somebody that's being taught, understand this $300,000 really got $3 million in there. It probably got $300 million in there. It might got 600,000 in there, but it got a harvest in there that's greater than what I'm placing. But see, the sparingly soul will do, okay, I got 300,000, so I'm going to give God $3. I'm going to give him $3. Here my $3, Lord. That's sparingly sowing. Saints, in your sowing is the area where God could challenge you and you could see for yourself whether or not you really are dependent on the Lord with money. You can't do that with other stuff, really. Yeah, you can do that with your health. You know what I'm saying? You could do that with other things. But when we deal with God testing you concerning uh, what is your stance of trust, he uses money. So God going to put this money in your hands. That's what he going to do. And, and all the father has been doing since Genesis is placing money in man's hands and seeing what will they do? How will you respond with it? How will you respond with the money that I place in your hands? That's all God been doing. All God been doing since Genesis is placing money in people's hands and seeing how they stewarded it. Remember even King Jesus told a parable in Matthew chapter 25, he talked about the man placing money in three different people's hands. One had five in the area of money, five talents. Other had two. The other had one. That's all he did. And he went away and didn't say a word. And then he came back to examine the accounts to see what they did with the money. 
That's kind of funny because King Jesus gave that parable. But then King Jesus said in the book of Luke, when the son of man come back to the earth, will he find faith? That's, that's something because he told a parable how the businessman went away for a time, then came back to examine where was the people's faith. And then King Jesus said, when I come back, will I find faith? That show you that seed sowing is connected to the rapture. Sowing and stewardship is connected to eternal life. King Jesus pits provision in your hands and see what you do with it. See what is important to you. See how much of it will you sow. See how much of it you'll save. See how much of it you'll spend on your own desires. See how much you'll use towards his kingdom. Since all that I have now, I didn't have all this all the time. Do you know that there was a time I didn't wear jewelry for about four, five straight years? No, as a matter of fact, it was seven. I didn't wear no jewelry for seven straight years. Do you know that, right? I gave away all my jewelry for free. And you know them dusty people, when they find out that you listen to God, they come try to tell you, why did you do that? Why didn't you charge the person this amount of money? Because God ain't say that. And when I sold all my jewelry away for seven years, I didn't wear no jewelry. I didn't wear a chain. I didn't wear no bracelet. I didn't wear no watch. I didn't wear no ring. I didn't wear no jewelry for seven years. Seven whole years, no jewelry. I didn't put on a chain. I didn't have no diamonds of any kind. So you see me with jewelry now. You don't understand this. These are harvests. I spent my time sowing. I, and guess what? I didn't just become a soul. There's nobody in my ministry that could say I begged them to sow into me. I became a soul because God anointed me as I was sowing. Remember, giving it shall be given. Many people, when God even introduced them to sowing, they start hiding. Do you know that, right? There are some people God called them to sow and then they go into hiding. They run from God all their life. Every time the God, God start talking to them about seed, they start running from God. See, I didn't run. I just started sowing. And saints, I was such a crazy sower, I would go on fast just so that I can have large money to sow. And when God gave me 7,000 and gave me 14,000 and I had money, I still was sowing. I didn't boast about the money because I knew I was going to flip that money in the kingdom of God and let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon that seed and multiply that seed sown and bring me back a harvest that was greater than what I gave. And I kept on unlocking the kingdom system. I didn't let no demon, no dusty demon stop me from fulfilling this supernatural mandate. And the supernatural money just kept on flowing. The supernatural money just kept on being released. I remember the time where I would go to my mailbox and I ain't had no money and I would sow my seed and then I would go to my mailbox. I say, money, 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 come it to me now. And I do that right there by my mailbox. And I remember I ain't had no mail in there. Ain't nobody was sending me no money. I was a young teenager just sowing and sowing. And sometimes I would sow my seed, tears dropping in my eyes. You know what? I wasn't crying because I felt God was doing me wrong. I was crying because I knew one day this seed going to accumulate into a harvest. This seed going to accumulate into a lifestyle. This seed going to accumulate into the promise of God being performed in my life. I put my trust in the Father, my Father in heaven, my God, my God, my Father. And when I was sowing my seed, even though I ain't see nothing, I still saw something. Because sowers have sight that's being released to them the more they honor God. A sower is a seer that sees through the 
mantle of honor. And when I was sowing, I knew that the spirit of God was going to make me sow because sowers are clean vessels. When you sow into a sower, every single thing start working according to God's plan in your life. When you sow into a sower, you start reaping rewards that that sower been reaping. You start seeing stuff happen for you that that sower been living in. Financial favor start exploding. I knew that God was going to make me a soul. Then I remember when the spirit of God started moving on me with visions. You know, I, I mentioned Apostle Leroy Thompson earlier in this uh, broadcast, but as I stand before the Lord, in the year 2015, around August, I think it was August the 28th, I came into a vision where I was inside of my apartment at the time. And um, at the time I was sowing a lot and uh, I understood money cometh. And in the vision, I was in an open vision, literally. A man came, stood up inside of my, my apartment. It was Apostle Leroy Thompson. It was literally him. As I stand before the Father in heaven, as I stand before the Lord. And it was literally him, and he had some type of blanket on his shoulders. I perceived via the spirit that it was a mantle. I knew it was a mantle. And he took the, 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 the thing off. And he threw it at me. And I was on my bed inside my apartment. And when he threw it on me, I, me and him started laughing. I thought it was 30 minutes. But it was really over hours laughing nonstop. Then I came out of the vision. And from there, everything took off from my sowing to my reaping, I understood there was a transference of spirits, transference of mantles. When you're sowing seed, God start transferring mantles to you for you to live rich, for you to live healthy, for you to live wise, for you to have access to authorities. Do you know that even when you're sowing, the spirit will give you phrases to utter in your atmosphere? You'll hear God tell you to decree something. He'll have you prophesy to dry bones, just like Ezekiel did. He'll pit phrases in your soul because you're walking in authority. The seed is an authority in the spirit realm. Demons respect the seed. Remember, how did the father threaten the serpent? The father threatened the serpent by saying, her seed shall crush your head. The father said, I'm gonna get payback on you through the seed principle. Through sowing, I'm going to get payback on you. Think about that. Think about that. The father began to threaten the serpent, threaten the satanic kingdom, and say, I'm going to use a seed to get all of y'all back for messing up my plans. So I show you that the seed repositions you in the plans of God. It's through the seed that the plan of God start working again. Some of you all are with people right now because you didn't sow your way out from them yet. They not even supposed to be in your life. But until you start sowing, they're going to sit right there and be a snake in your life. You got to sow your way out of snakes. Because understand that wrong people are okay with hiding and camouflaging themselves as your friend, as your brother, as your sister, as your cousin, as your mama, your father, your son, your daughter. Yeah, they snakes too. People be snakes all the time and you haven't worked the guard and weapon for snakes, which is the seed. The seed is a garden weapon. When you're sowing, you are protecting yourself from unseen danger. 
2 Corinthians chapter 9 was dealing with the fact that you got a purpose in your heart to sow. So you got to think about sowing. If you somebody that wait to get money, then you say, okay, I'm going to sow when I get money. You're not going to sow. You're going to eat the seed. You can't sow when you get money. You got to sow before you get money. Sowing got to go on in your imagination. Reaping got to go on in your imagination. You can't wait for an opportunity just to reap. You got to gather your harvest in your mind. My goodness. Man, come on. Come on. Sowing and reaping is not something that you do in the natural first. You got to do it in the mentality. So that when the natural come and you have the power to sow in the natural, you won't become natural and eat the seed. You got to put the super on that natural seed because you done imagined it in your mind. You got to put the super, super on that natural harvest because you done imagined it in your mind. Meaning I'm saying the harvest going to show up in the natural. But you're going to have to receive the harvest in your mental before it shows up in the natural. So that when it shows up, you can be in position to receive it. See, when you harvest minded, you can't hang out with everybody because while you hanging out with them, the harvest might go visit you and you're not in the location. And now the harvest is missed. But see, when you don't receive the harvest in your mind, you sanctify yourself. Yeah, yeah. When you receive the harvest in your mind, you start praying in the Holy Ghost more. When you receive the harvest in your mind, you start forgiving people. You start clearing out the clutter in your soul because you're not willing to let nothing be a harvest blocker inside of you. You don't want nothing to block the harvest. So you start making the way straight so that the harvest could get to you without any traffic. You start clearing the roads in your mind and clearing the roads. Say, look at this here, man. Man, I'm not playing with you. Look, man, I got my own wallet. I got my own wallet, man. What that say? Man, and guess what? I got a Gucci wallet. I got a Louis Vuitton wallet. But now I ain't rocking none of that because I got my brand new wallet. This my own wallet, man. What that say right there? This my brand, man. Huh? What I'm telling you, saints, the seed is going to make you at a higher level than everybody else. Man, this is my own wallet, man. You ain't seeing what I'm saying. I got my own brand. Saints Gucci, nice. I got Gucci, man. I got, I got Louis Vuitton, man. All, all, man, all my seats right here is, is all. I got all my stuff right here, man. I got Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all this stuff right here. I got Versace stuff, Versace pillows, Versace chair, all that stuff. I'm not worried about that. I'm saying I got my own brand, man. You see that? I got my own brand. I got my own. In saints, I should show you my bag. I got my own JHM bag. I got my own JHM uh, uh, face mask. I got all that stuff. You see what I'm saying? But all this come from seed sowing. God give you the desire of your heart. Now, saints, uh, who this going to win to the Lord? Think about that. Who this going to win to the Lord? You got to ask yourself. Remember, when he turned water into wine, who was that wine going to win to the Lord? He ain't had nothing about winning to the Lord. The Lord was providing for them what they desired. They wanted some wine. When you are sower, God start doing stuff for you. That other people won't know what's the purpose of him doing it for you because that's what make you happy. See, God make the seed so happy. See, I like seeing this right here. I like seeing, I like seeing, I like seeing my own print on my stuff. Huh? I like seeing that. 
I like seeing that. I got a custom made. I got a custom made. I like seeing that. I like seeing I got my own wallet here. I like seeing that. You see what I'm saying? I got my own wallet. I like seeing that. So, so the Lord did this for me because I'm sowing. When you sowing, you become a creator of your own life. And the devil can't determine the events that happen to you because you're listening to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you underneath a shield of favor, a shield of faith. You quenching all the fiery dots of the enemy because you sowing into your God and saying, I love the Lord. It don't matter what the Lord asked me to do. Let me tell you, sir, if the Lord told me, son, I want you to be homeless again, I, 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 I leave, I leave everything. The Lord know that. My father, my God in heaven. Know that I have not clung to anything that I have. I'm not clinging to stuff. That's why I'm sowing. See, I got many people in my ministry that bless me, but I keep on sowing. Think about this. Let me, let me show you how this works. So for Christmas, right? I bought people robes. I bought people lavish robes. I ain't going to speak too much on it, right? So people in my ministry brought, they, they bought me Versace robes. Now, who told them to, to, to buy me Versace robes? The same angels that's working with me to bless others, working with others to bless me. That's how seed sowing work. But see, I'm their man of God, though. But see, I'm a sower. Do you know that there's some preachers that don't sow no seed? They're going to tell you to give to their cash app. They're going to tell you to give to their PayPal. They're going to tell you to become a partner of their ministry. But they don't sow. That's hypocrisy. One of my sons, one time, I, I told him, I said, come here. I said, come, let me show you my sowing account. I just want you to see this. Don't, it don't mean nothing. I just want you to see with your own eyes how much I sow. One time I was with one of my sons in a, in a, in a conference, my, my son Juan. I, I, told, I told him, empty out all my bag. I had, a, I had a bag full of money, more money than you ever seen in your life. I said, get every dollar in there. Every single dollar we sow in it. You can't, so, so you can't tell a man like me nothing. I've given away everything that I've had over four times in my life. You can't tell me nothing. I know that the seed works. And the way that I don't put my trust in this natural stuff is I keep on sowing. And I'm not no sparingly sower. 